y'all doing? This is Mongo Slade, and today we're going to talk about a paradox in pro wrestling. High-risk moves, and whether they should be controlled or not. So today we're going to, the reason I brought this up is, you know, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, the flippity do wrestlers, the gymnasts, and all these guys who tear up their knees and backs and necks and all this type of stuff. And it just happened to stumble across an article from uh, Tetsuya Naito, the IWGP uh, double champ, let's just put it like that. And he's talking about his match with Cody Ibushi. And he talks in this article a lot about his uh, loving to wrestle Cody Ibushi. And um, yeah, he and Cody Ibushi kind of have the same uh, idea of what wrestling should be. And he, you know, took the time to answer some criticisms of a German suplex spot, which took place in one of their matches where Cody Ibushi apparently, you know, almost knocked himself out uh, getting suplexed on the ring apron. And basically, you know, Kota Ibushi has always been criticized about, you know, his style being too dangerous, that he always falls on his neck, and that, you know, he's going to cripple himself, he's going to kill himself, or whatever. So, Tetsuya Naito uh, decided to respond to this, and I think that it was very, rather interesting. So, this is what he said. He says, there was a lot of feedback on Twitter for that afterwards, and I think Ibushi felt the same way about it, that isn't for people to say. They can say it was too dangerous all they want. But I want to come back and ask them if they want to see completely safe pro wrestling and how it gets done. The interviewer says danger is part and parcel of all pro wrestling. And Naito says, so trust in us and watch. There is no such thing as safe pro wrestling. A body slam can end your career. I really don't like fans who have never done any of it. Judge on what's safe and what isn't. So while I agree with uh, the idea of people being concerned trolls, you know, people who are, you know, nagging you about, you know, your health and all this sort of thing. It is something to be said about high risk and, you know, about promotions and different things like this. Now, here's what I here's what I mean. Uh, we always try to take it to the broader context. In the broader context, Tetsuya Naito is from Japan. Japan has universal health care, right? If one of these guys breaks their necks, it's going to be on the taxpayer to, to, to take care of them, essentially. Not the same in the United States. <laughs> it's not the same in the United States at all. You know, like, so uh, if somebody were to break their neck, like, you know, Darren Drozdoff did on a, on a buy spot, uh, he has health care costs for the rest of his life. And, you know, the United States does not have universal health care. Now, even if WWE is taking care of it, which I don't know whether they still are or they aren't, I, I, it's hard to tell, you know, because some, but wrestlers who have had, you know, career ending injuries, they really have to figure out how to survive. And he's correct. There is no such thing as safe pro wrestling. But then there are necessary risks and unnecessary risks, right? Uh, we just saw recently a uh, Ridge Holland who got, you know, tore his tore up his leg because a guy just did something simple, a plancha over the top rope. Nothing that required any special flips or dives or anything like that. Just a simple plancha over the top rope. And he tore up his leg and he's been gone for months. You know, so that's a guy who, you know, WWE has to pay his medical bills and they pretty much have to pay him while he's sitting at home. You know, I mean, yes, he's sure he's rehabbing and stuff like that. But uh, what, we, what we're asking is, what is the risk versus the reward? Now, Naito in the interview says that, you know, that he has these kinds of matches because they're fun. He, he thinks that, you know, they're fun matches with Cody Ibushi because they, they're dangerous. But he says that fun and danger aren't the same thing. And while I agree with that, I agree with that, especially there is some fun in the dangerous aspects of it, especially from watching it, because it's like, ooh, you know, you get that res you get that response. But you have to ask the question, what is the reward of doing it? You know, what is the reward of, you know, taking these ugly German suplexes on your neck or, you know, taking power drivers from the top rope or you know, these kinds of things that could end with somebody getting paralyzed or put in a wheelchair. What is the reward of it? You know, especially if it's not the finish. What is the reward? So the reward of it is you get a ooh or an ah from the crowd. And that's about it. You know, like, and it still doesn't match somebody who can cut a good promo or, you know, people do silly stuff like The Rock used to do. The people's elbow and the most over thing on the roster. Meanwhile, I mean, on, on, on the show, meanwhile, you got guys setting each other on fire. You got guys, you know, you know, stabbing each other with barbed wire. People falling on nails and thumbtacks and all that type of stuff. That stuff doesn't really attract the audience. You know, like 
like the safer stuff. So when you look at the risk versus the reward, you know, the safest pro wrestling in the world is the WWE style, you know, because it's now it's becoming even fewer bumps than it used to be. But Hogan didn't like to bump a lot, you know, neither did Warrior or anybody else. So they wrestled a very, you know, punch and kick heavy style with the occasional slam here and there. It's become a little bit more aggressive as, you know, time has gone on, but they've also banned quite a few moves. Before, for a short time, there was um, bans on high risk moves like uh, shooting star presses and 450 splashes and stuff like that. Of course, those bans have been um, reversed over time. I think the ban on pile drivers still exists. Um, but <clears throat> the point of all of that stuff is that when these guys get hurt, you know, it's on company time, it's on the company dime. And But in Japan, it's not the same thing. The company probably doesn't have to worry about it too much because everybody has health care. It's a government thing. And I would imagine it's similar in other places. You know, you know Mexico maybe. I haven't looked um, whether Mexico has universal health care or not. But um, Mexico, you know, Lucha Libre is another one where you just have people jumping all over the place. They're just flying all over the place. It's inevitable that someone's going to land awkwardly and hurt themselves, you know, or land awkwardly and, and almost die. Now, there was a young young wrestler who got killed in Mexico. He got, got killed by a chop to the chest, like a really hard chop, and it killed him. You know, there was also, you know, the, uh, the idea of uh, the guy who died because Rey Mysterio did a, I think it was a drop toe hold onto the ropes and the guy died. So Naito is 100% correct. There is no way to do wrestling safe, but there is necessary risks and unnecessary risks. So the question of, you know, what is the risk versus the reward for me as a fan is, is it kind of, is it rewarding to see guys put their lives on the line and. You know, it's like, yeah, but I kind of want to see you next week, too. So, like, if you kill yourself this week or you break your own body down, then you can't wrestle in six months or whatever. Like, uh, Cassiotti Shabata, you know, who broke his neck and he can't wrestle again. How does it benefit his fans that he put all that effort into, you know, that one match when he broke his own neck? or well, he broke a neck. I shouldn't say he broke his own neck. But uh, when he broke his neck, it doesn't benefit his fan base at all. You know, he took himself out of the work pool. Now, he's lucky to be in Japan where, you know, he has universal health care, so he'll be okay as far as, you know, not going broke from it. Uh, but from his fans' perspective, it's like, yeah, he was good, but, you know, he's been gone for years now, and was it worth it, you know? And you can say, well, what about... You know, such and such, you know, Shawn Michaels, you know, he was gone for four years after he injured his back. He's like, yeah, but that was also a silly stunt where he injured his back on. He injured his back in a casket match, getting back body dropped over the casket and he hit his spine on the edge of the casket, you know, and caused back problems. And it definitely affected the WrestleMania 14 match with Stone Cold Steve Austin, which could which was the biggest match of Austin's career. And, you know, the belt, the match where Austin got the belt. But Sean couldn't couldn't, couldn't couldn't perform at the highest level because he was doing high risk shit in Royal Rumble match just three three months before, you know. So you have to think about that sort of thing. And I and I think that he says you know that he doesn't think that fans who haven't done it shouldn't judge it. But I think that those are the people who are paying for it. So I, I don't think like I don't know about that one, but I see his point. That, you know, if you trust the performers and you trust that they're well trained and that they know what they're doing, then you can easily just back away and say, well, these guys know what they're doing. So if they end up in a wheelchair, well, they know what they're doing. And that's kind of my position is that I say it's stupid. You know, I'll always say like, yo, look, some of the stuff where Ibushi falling on his head is absolutely the dumbest shit in the world. It's so dumb. It is so unnecessary. Um, you had Hiromu Takahashi just come back from neck surgery and he's gone right back to bumping his neck. It's like, these guys don't care, but I think it's an idea that came from, they are in a country where they have universal health care. So if they end up crippled or fucking dead, you know, Japan is such a nanny state that they'll be taken care of anyway. They just want to go out there and quote unquote, have fun. And that's fine. But in the United States, there's, you can't do that. You know, the safer, the better, you know, which is why wrestling should be basically grappling. And 
with the occasional high risk move for people who can't really aren't really all that good at grappling. Now, Japan does do that. They do a lot of grappling style. So I, I'm not going to say like, oh, Japan sucks. It's, that's not the case at all. But it's just something to think about. Like, there's always these little paradoxes in wrestling. You know, high risk stuff is crowd pleasing, but it's only crowd pleasing in the moment. People are like, oh, and then they may enjoy it in clips later. But you're the one that have to live with the, the nagging knee injury, the nagging back injury, the nagging neck injury. And you might be, I don't know how old Tessio Naito is now, but I'm hoping he plans to get older. So, like, you know, when you're 45, 46 or something like that, maybe he might be that old now. I don't know. But when he gets up there in age, he's going to feel all this stuff of him falling on his head and falling on his neck and falling on his back. That stuff is going to eventually build up, you know. And But if he doesn't care and he doesn't want anybody to judge him, I mean, it is what it is. But I think for, you know, American wrestlers, they shouldn't listen to this guy. <laughs> if you wrestle in the United States, don't listen to him. <laughs> you know, don't listen to him. You should try to make as much money as you can, as long as you can, because... There ain't no unions, there ain't no universal health care, and we don't know how long companies pay for your medical bills, uh, maybe in perpetuity. I mean, I will hope WWE is still paying for uh, Darren Drozdoff, you know, having a broken neck in their ring. I would hope so, um, but maybe not. We don't know. So I think that it's better safe than sorry. But I agree overall that there is no such thing as safe pro wrestling. You know, pro wrestling is dangerous, which is why, you know, people need to be well-trained before doing it. But just because you're well-trained and you know what you're doing, you're a veteran with a long history, a long history of doing this stuff, doesn't mean that things can't happen. Ask Stone Cold Steve Austin and Owen Hart. You know, two people, neither one of them were rookies. You know, Austin had been wrestling since the late 80s. Steve Austin, you know, Owen Hart grew up in a wrestling family. They botched a pile driver, which whether you want to uh, blame Owen for it or you want to blame Austin for it, doesn't matter. They botched a pile driver, right? Something simple. They botched a pile driver and the man almost got paralyzed for it. It Things happen. You know, basic things happen. You know, the rocker dropper, Marty Jannetty almost, did he paralyze that guy who, you know, he botched the rocker dropper? You know, um, there have been some really ugly injuries, Really, really ugly injuries in wrestling, you know, and some of the risks weren't that great. You know, some of the risks weren't that weren't that big. So I think we need to think about that when we say, well, people shouldn't judge. It's like, well, look at all the years we got robbed of Stone Cold Steve Austin because, you know, he had a broken neck. How many more years could we have had a Stone Cold Steve Austin if Owen Hart hadn't dropped him on his head? You know, what about. You know, and there's a, a number of uh, different things like that. And we talk always talk about, you know, outside the ring stuff like Magnum TA, car accident, or uh, Brian Pillman, I believe it was also a car accident or a motorcycle accident. Same thing with Kerry Von Eric, where you got these guys who now have bolts in their, in their ankle, or, you know, Kerry Von Eric had a fake foot. And, you know, that affects their careers. It affects their abilities to go forward. And that's just outside the ring stuff. You know, inside the ring, we've seen people die, you know, and even die from things that happened inside the ring. So it's something that we have to think about. And But what do you guys think? What do you think about the high risk nature of wrestling? Do we trust the performers and just say, do whatever you want? I don't care. I'm just a fan. Or do we think about things a little bit more analytical and say, well, I am just a fan, but it kind of would be, you know, I kind of want to see you guys wrestling in the dome next year. It would be nice if you didn't break your neck. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel, send me money if you can. If you have any spare change, I would appreciate that. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.